this is what runs through my mind on a daily basis. I work retail, and this is what I want to do to my colleagues constantly. Like, seem like the unassuming one, but then beat them to death, you know? Ah, <sighs> good times. But anyway, nobody. Let's talk about it. Let's go! So nobody came out this year, so I'm going to keep it, like, relatively spoiler-free. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give my rating, and then after that there will be spoilers, so you can stick around if you want to hear about that. If not, and you just want to hear, like, a basic thin plot, then just watch the first half of this video and step away. I'll let you know when spoilers are going to happen, but that's how this video is going to go. It stars Bob Odenkirk, who everyone knows from Breaking Bad. That is basically what he's famous for. Breaking Bad projected him into the starlight, but not like action movie starlight. This was something different. This was something new. It's um very weird seeing him do this, but he absolutely crushed it in this role. So nobody follows the story of Hutch Mansell, I think his name is, who's played by Bob, and he's this unassuming loser who just has this shitty life, the normal, mundane, boring stuff. Like, it literally shows, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and he's, like, missing the bins. This something there between him and his wife, there's some kind of problem. It never really explains it, but you can tell because there's, like, pillows in between each of them in the bed, and um, he's just there doing his job. Just a normal, boring, shit, everyday life. But you can kind of tell there's something there. There's something hidden behind it. It doesn't look fulfilled. It's just going through the motions. Like, he clearly wants something out of life and he's not fulfilled with what he's getting. But you can tell there's something there that is just ready to, to snap. And uh, it does. It literally all starts out... This is relatively early in the film, so this isn't spoiling too much. But it starts out when his home gets robbed and there's two people there. And he goes to hit him and he stops. And people are like... Oh, okay. I was thinking, really? Why is he stopping? Like, he could beat the shit out of these people. But he chooses to stop, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then you find out later why. I'm not going to spoil it here, but you do find out later why. Skip ahead a bit. There is this scene on the bus, this fight scene on the bus. Again, I can't really spoil it. I'm going to very quickly go through the plot and kind of explain it, and then go into spoilers, because I really want to talk about this film. But there's a fight scene on a bus and that's really cool. There's also a scene in a warehouse later on that's really cool, but it's so difficult to talk about this film without talking about spoilers. So the basic plot is there's this guy, this down and out guy who there's something there, but you don't know what it is. And then something happens. He gets dragged into something else and then something else happens and so forth, so forth. It's basically like John Wick and it's going to be hard not to make that comparison because the same guy who wrote this wrote all three John Wick films and it feels very much John Wick, but I loved John Wick, and I loved this. So I'm just going to rate this film very quickly. I would say this film is definitely worth watching and definitely worth adding to your collection. I need it! Okay, so let's get into some spoiler stuff. Basically, he is some kind of, like, what, what did they call him, like, not an accountant, but, like, auditor. That's the one. They call him an auditor. Or something. I think it's the auditor. Anyway, he's the guy who goes in. He's the last one you want to see in any situation. Because he's the guy who will literally fuck you up. And it's funny because every single person who discovers who he is just instantly just leaves. Like there's one part where he goes into some tattoo den because the people who robbed his house have got a certain tattoo. So he goes in, flashes an FBI badge. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that expired 20 years ago. And then someone sees a tattoo on his wrist and just stands up and be like, thanks for your service, and just leaves and locks everyone in the room with him. And you're like, okay, what what has this guy done to be so feared? And then later on as well, when um, the bad guy, the bad guy's really boring, by the way. He's just a really generic Russian bad guy. When he like gets this person to kind of um, find out who he is, when she finds out, she throws the pitch that I'm like, oh, you don't have to pay me goodbye and just runs off. So it's like, okay, there's something clearly like really bad or mentally unhinged about this guy, Bob Odenkirk, Hutch. Such a generic name, Hutch. I guess that's why they picked it. He's a nobody. But this fight scene on the bus, it's so believable because he's just sat there. This is after he's literally just found the people who actually burgled him and he goes in and goes to get his stuff back and he's literally, there's one line in there that's just screaming, give me the goddamn kitty bracelet because they've stole one from his house, like, it was in the bowl where all the money was, and his daughter wants it back, so he's just like, give me the goddamn kitty bracelet, and then they find out they've got a baby who's hooked up to a life support machine, so he feels bad, 
and he leaves and you kind of think, okay, it makes sense why they've done this. It's not great because they've still robbed a man, but still, it makes sense. And you also find out the reason he didn't bash their head in with a golf club earlier on is because he saw the gun and saw it was empty and he's like, right, best not. But of course, you don't know that at the time. You find that out later through his friend who's on like the old style radio communication theme, a bob army stuff i don't know but this fight scene on the bus like he gets there and he's just like at the end of the day he's had a really shit day and these people that they crash the car these drunk guys they then get on the bus and then he just pulls out his gun and just drops all like the bullets and he's just like i'm gonna fuck you up and then he like starts taking punches instantly he doesn't fuck anyone up he just keeps getting hit over and over again but he keeps getting up and he literally like gets thrown out of a window gets back on the bus and like kills i think how many does he kill he puts them all in hospital one of them he hits them in the throat with a bar from the bus and it like breaks his windpipe so he cuts his neck and puts a straw in so he can breathe and i'm like oh that's that's nasty but he literally beats the shit out of these five people and it's it's a very good scene a very good editing as well none of this like really bad shaky cam where you can't really see what's going on and you're like what the fuck am i looking at that made me feel dizzy. But then, you just like, it's good shots. Like, you can see wide angles. And he did a lot of the stunts himself. Props to him for this. I know this review is just me rambling, isn't it, about this one scene. But it's a really good scene. Oh, yeah, Christopher Lloyd's in this as well. Doc Brown himself. He plays his dad. And he's just a little side character. But he's also a badass. But I don't want to go into too much of that either. Because just, just watch the movie, essentially. Because I'm spoiling everything. I don't want to spoil the rest of the film. But there is two more very good action sequences in there. And it's it's definitely worth watching. Basically, if you like John Wick, go and watch this. But yeah, Bob Odenkirk was fantastic in it. He normally plays the comic relief character. And he goes full action hero in this. And it's just, it's completely believable. Like, there's no over-the-top, oh, I'm a superhero type deal where, you know, they, you know when they get punched and they just get up as though nothing's wrong. Or they get stabbed. And then the next scene, they're just running at full speed. It's like, you wouldn't be doing that. This guy gets fucked up a lot. It's like, he gets beaten up tons. And then near the end, he's like, he's slowly unlocking his powers as he's going through. And it's it's just enjoyable. Like, it's just enjoyable to watch. The reason I'm not going to rate this film a masterpiece is simply because the characters are very shallow. The bad guy isn't very interesting. He's a generic Russian bad guy. He's very boring. He sings karaoke and stuff. He's not really intimidating. There's not really much depth to it. You're just watching it unfold, but it's damn entertaining to watch unfold. But apart from that, there's nothing like behind it. There's no meaning. There's no, no anything, no real like, oh my God, what's this? I'm, I'm having to think about this. You're just watching it unfold. So I enjoyed it thoroughly, but it's not like a masterpiece of cinema. So there you go. Go buy it. Go watch it. But yeah, nobody. Have you guys seen it? If you have, leave a comment below. Let me know. Sorry this review's been a little rambly and all over the place. It's um, it's very warm in this room, so I'm kind of trying to focus at the same time as do this. And it's difficult because my brain's fried. Like the Inception video before. Summer. Summer in UK. For some reason, it's decided to be the hottest fucking summer ever. And it's awful. So it's a miracle that I've even managed to do this video. But... I, I did have some notes, actually. Let me just, let me quickly go through these notes. Oh, yeah, sorry. One one extra note. There's um, a scene near the end where he's, like, waiting for the bad guy to come out of this club. And when he does, he then puts the cassette in and starts the music playing. I thought that was really cool. And also, one other thing is when, <laughs> when they're in the warehouse scene. Okay, this part's stupid. In the warehouse scene at the end, when they're fighting everyone off, the song You'll Never Walk Alone, the Liverpool Football Club anthem starts playing for some unknown reason and my partner jamie she said to me oh you should rate this film a cinematic masterpiece because it's got this song in it because she's a massive football fan and obviously supports liverpool and i just kind of looked at her and I'm like what i'm like no i'm gonna rate it a zero now just because of that so no i'm not rating it a zero i'm not rating it a five it's a four just just before the cutoff point but as soon as she said that to me she's like oh i can't believe you've not heard this song Yes, yes, Jamie, and uh, that was a, a very awkward silence that we uh, we shared after that. But the film was entertaining all the way through. Go and watch it, and uh, thank you for watching this. Sorry it's been rambly. Doesn't matter. 
See you guys next time. Ooh.